To identify the most acidic or basic atom in a molecule, we can use one of two methods. In method one, we compare the pKa values of the acidic protons. In method two, we compare the relative stability of the species, either the acids or bases, although usually bases, to determine the most stable. To do so, we consider various factors, including electronegativity, atom size, resonance, hybridization, inductive effects, charge, and solvent. We will see how to use these methods to identify the most acidic or basic atom in a single molecule, between molecules on their own, or between molecules in an equilibrium. In principle, both methods can be used in any situation, although it's often more straightforward to use one method or the other. To determine the relative stability of two or more species, we can use any one of the factors listed below. In this video, we are specifically going to be comparing the relative stability of bases by applying these factors, but these factors apply to any species. For example, to compare two different charged acids or two neutral bases. The general strategy is to compare the species, decide which factors apply, then determine how those factors affect the relative stability of the species. The more stable the species, the weaker or lower energy they are. The less stable a species, the stronger and higher energy it will be. Let's look at how electronegativity affects the relative stability of two species. This factor predominates when comparing atoms across a row in the periodic table. We can compare the basic carbon versus oxygen atoms in this example. Because the oxygen atom is more electronegative than the carbon atom, it can better hold or stabilize the negative charge. That makes oxygen more stable with a negative charge than the carbon atom and makes O- a weaker or more stable base. Which base is least stable in this case? Chloride is the most stable base because it is the most electronegative atom and can best stabilize the negative charge. The thiolate, being the least electronegative, is least able to stabilize the negative charge. It is the strongest base of this pair. Next, let's look at the effect of an atom's size. If we have two bases in the same column of the periodic table, atomic size, or radius, is the factor that most strongly influences their stability. It's a little bit like floating on a lake. The species will be more stable with a negative charge on a larger anion that can better disperse the electron density than in a smaller anion where the electron density is concentrated in a much smaller volume. Larger anions are more stable than smaller anions. Bromide is more stable than fluoride. Here is another example. Which base is most stable? The important part lies in the atom that is carrying the negative charge. Sulfur and oxygen are in the same column of the periodic table, so atomic size, or radius, is the most important factor affecting their stability. Sulfur is larger than oxygen, so the sulfur atom can better disperse the negative charge. Notice that we are not comparing the entire molecule, just the atom acting as the base, called the basic atom. Resonance is another factor that we can use to compare bases. We have to draw the resonance structures to understand how resonance affects the electron distribution in a molecule. In this example, we are comparing ethoxide versus the carboxylate anion. With the ethoxide, no resonance is possible. The electrons are stuck, or localized, on that oxygen. The electrons cannot resonate with the carbon on the left because that carbon would have too many bonds. The negative charge on the carboxylate anion is not stuck, or localized, just on the oxygen on the right. The charge is delocalized, or spread out, with the other oxygen atom and the spreading out or delocalization of that charge stabilizes the molecule. That makes the carboxylate a weaker base than the ethoxide. Of the three bases shown here, which one is most stable? Base C is most stable. Base A has no resonance possible. Base B has two possible resonance structures, whereas base C has the most resonance structures. Be sure to draw them out to see how resonance affects the relative stability of the species. Hybridization also affects basicity. 
This carbanion on the far left is sp3 hybridized. The one with the alkene is sp2 hybridized, and the alkyne is sp hybridized. We calculate how much s character is in each of those hybrid orbitals. There are four orbitals total in an sp3 hybridized orbital, 1s and 3p. For an sp3 hybridized orbital, 25%, or one out of the four, is an s orbital. We say that an sp3 hybridized orbital has 25% s character. One out of the three orbitals in the sp2 hybridized orbital is s, resulting in a 33% s character. And half of the orbitals in an sp hybridized orbital are s, resulting in 50% s character. S orbitals are located closer to the nucleus, closer to the protons in the nucleus, than are the p orbitals. Whenever the electrons, little packets of negative charge, are closer to the nucleus's positive charge, they are more neutralized, and therefore more stable. That makes any orbital that has more percent s character more stable. The higher the percent s character, the more stable the base. This sp hybridized anion is more stable than the sp2 hybridized anion, which is more stable than the sp3 hybridized anion. Of the three bases shown here, which one is most stable? Base A is most stable. To figure this out, determine the hybridization of the basic atom in each case. Base A is sp2 hybridized, whereas the other two basic atoms are sp3 hybridized. sp2 hybridized bases are more stable than sp3 hybridized bases, as described before. A factor called the inductive effect affects base stability. In this example, we will compare ethoxide, CH3, CH2O-, with CF3, CH2O-, trifluoroethoxide. The inductive effect does not completely move or delocalize electrons like with resonance. It's a weaker effect. The electronegative fluorine atoms start to pull electron density toward them, which is shown by these arrows on the bonds. That slightly pulls the electron density away from the oxygen atom and into the molecule, spreading it out. The inductive effect stabilizes the base. The more stable the base, the weaker it is meaning that trifluoroethoxide is the weaker base of this pair. We can generalize by saying that the inductive effect will be greater with a more electronegative atom causing the inductive effect, a greater number of electronegative atoms, and with electronegative atoms that are closer to the basic atom. Of the four bases here, which one is most stable? Base C is most stable. It has the most electronegative atoms, Chlorine is more electronegative than bromine, eliminating option D. The greatest number of electronegative atoms, two chlorine atoms versus one in option B. And the electronegative chlorine atoms are closer to the basic oxygen atom in option C than in option A. All these factors draw electron density away from the basic oxygen atom more in C than in any of the other choices. That stabilizes base C more than any of the other bases. Charge is a final factor we will use to compare bases. Charge is the only difference between the species in this example. We have a methoxide with an O- versus methanol with a neutral oxygen. A proton, while it is a difference, is such a minor difference that we can ignore it in this case. The only important difference is that the methoxide has a negative charge on oxygen, while the methanol is neutral on oxygen. The neutral species is more stable than the charged one, making the methoxide the stronger base, and methanol the weaker base. Of the three bases shown here, which one is most stable? Base A is most stable. There are some factors that go beyond the scope of this video, such as the effect of solvent on relative base stability. That will be covered in a more advanced course. Often, there are many factors to consider. If those factors are working in opposition, sometimes we can identify one factor that's more important than the others, and otherwise it might be more straightforward to compare the pKa values of the conjugate acids. We will address this in practice questions on a case-by-case -case basis. In summary, we analyze various factors that affect base stability and how to use those factors to decide which base is stronger and which is weaker. 
which one is less stable, and which is more stable. You will learn to apply these factors in various contexts in the following sections. Eventually, you'll be able to integrate that knowledge into more complex reactions.